In this Blender tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create this procedural scratched plastic material. So here is the procedural node setup, and then after we create the node setup, I'll be showing you how to join together into this custom node group so you can customize the look of the material. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material to use in your projects, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, links are in the description. So we have this scale value here to change the size of the entire material, and that'll also change the size of the scratches. Then we also have the plastic color, so that's just the base color for the plastic so I just have it as kind of a blue color then we also have the subsurface so if you want to allow a little bit of light to go through the plastic you can turn up the subsurface a bit then we also have the roughness of the material so you can make it more of a rough plastic or a really shiny plastic then we have two settings for the roughness so we have the noise roughness scale because there's a little bit of variation in the roughness and then also the ro noise roughness detail then we have the scratches color so right now I have the scratches color at just a slightly lighter color so it's almost as if a little bit of the plastic has been scratched away so the plastic is a little bit lighter underneath but you can change the scratches color right there then we also have the scratches detail so if you want less detail you can turn that down and now the scratches are more smooth or you can turn them up and make them really detailed and then we also have this distortion value to kind of add distortion to the scratches now there's actually two different scratches textures which are overlaid on top of each other so this is the first one the scratches scale one and then we also have this thickness value here which is going to change the thickness of those scratches then we have the scratches scale two which is the second texture and then we have the scratches thickness so you can turn that up if you want more scratches and have them be a bit thicker then we have two bump strength so the scratches bump strength and then also the noise bump strength which is just some subtle noise over the plastic so if you'd like to purchase this procedural material you can get that with the links in the description and if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials you can check out my ultimate procedural material pack which comes with all of my materials pre-set up for blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails sorted catalogs and customizable node groups and you'll also get future updates with new procedural materials. And to learn how to create more materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. So real quick, I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport if you want to set up the blend file the same way that I have. So I went to the add menu and I just added an icosphere and then right behind me on the add icosphere settings, I turned the subdivisions to six. You can use the object context menu and shade the object smooth. And then I just scaled the object down to like a 0.2 because the default objects in Blender are kind of large and I'll hit Control A and apply the scale so that's the new default size of the object. Then I also added a camera and I just pointed the camera at the object. And if you select the camera and then go right over here to the object data properties of the camera, I turned the focal length up to 80 just to kind of zoom the camera in a bit. And then I also added some area lights. So you can see I added these two different area lights right here. So this area light here, the power is set to 50. And then the other area light here, the power is set to 10. So with this area light, it's kind of large here up on the top, kind of shining down. And then for this other area light, this one is kind of in the background just to give a bit of a rim light to the object. Now I also added in this HDRI from polyhaven.com, so link is in the video description if you'd like to download it, and I downloaded the 1K HDR version. So if you go here to the world properties, you can click on the yellow dot next to color, you can choose environment texture, and then just click on the open button and open up the texture to add in the HDRI to get some realistic lighting. And then also if you click here to go to the render properties and go down here to the film tab, I checkmark the transparent button just so that you can't see the HDRI in the background, and also if you open up the color management, I'm using AGX and very high contrast to make things look more contrasty. So I'm over here in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm in the rendered viewport mode and I have the shader editor right over here. So I'll just select the object and click on new to add a new material and I'll just rename the material. Now I'm also gonna be using the Node Wrangler add-on in the video. So if you don't have that enabled, you can click on edit, you can go to the preferences and then over here on the add-ons tab, you can just search for a node and just enable the Node Wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So let's start by creating the base texture for the scratches. So to do this, I'm gonna search for the magic texture. We'll drop it here and then I'll hold down the control and shift key and select the magic texture to preview it on the object. Now also with the magic texture selected, I'll hit Control T, and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And I'm going to use the object coordinates, so we'll put the object into the vector, because the object coordinates will place the texture on the object more evenly. And then let's change some of the settings of the magic texture. So I like turning the depth up to 5. I think that looks pretty good for this texture, but you can play around with the depth and try them out if you like a different one. And then also I'm going to turn the scale to 3, and also the distortion to 3. So turning up 
the distortion is really going to give us all that detail there which we can use to make the scratches. Now I just want to isolate the scratches so you can only see the scratches but not anything else. So to do that we can make it more contrasty by searching for a color ramp. We'll put the color ramp here after the magic texture and then I can drag the black tab out but then I'll also drag the white tab out much closer to the black texture and now you can see we're just getting that scratches texture. Now I want to make these scratches look a lot more distorted and noisy to look more realistic. So let's drag the texture coordinate and mapping back and I'm going to be searching for a noise texture to distort the magic texture. So we'll drop this down here. Let's control shift select the noise texture to preview it and we can also use the same object coordinates. So we'll put the mapping vector into the vector of the noise texture. And now I can play around with the settings. So I'm going to turn the scale down to like a 2 and I'll turn the detail up to like a 10. So now what I want to do is put this into the magic texture through the vector to distort it, but I want to control how distorted it is. So what we're going to do is search for a mix color, and we're going to put the mix color here after the mapping, but before the magic. So now the noise texture factor can go into color B, and then the mapping vector that can go into color A. So now if I control shift select the color ramp, you can see if I look here really closely at one of the scratches, it looks really noisy. And I can drag the factor around to distort it. Now the texture is being moved around a lot, so to make that not happen, I can click on the mix here and I can change it to linear light. And this way as I drag the factor, it is going to distort it, but it's not going to move around quite as much. So for the factor here, I find that a 0.13 looks pretty good, just a 0.13. So now we have that nice distortion there on the scratches. Now I like to keep my nodes nicely organized so it's really easy to remember what everything does. So I'll click and drag to box click these nodes. I'll hit Control J to add a frame. So these are the mapping nodes. So I'm going to select the frame here and press F2 to add a label and I can call this mapping. I'm going to select these two nodes here. I'll hit Control J to add a frame and kind of compress them. Hit F2 to give the frame a label and I'm going to call this distortion. And then we can box like these two nodes here. And again, hit Control J and F2 to add a label. And I'll just call this scratches because those are the scratches texture. Now I want to add a lot more scratches because we don't have very many scratches right now. So I'm going to be duplicating the texture and then changing it a bit and then mixing them together. So let's take the magic texture and the color ramp and I'm going to press Control Shift D. So Control Shift D will duplicate the nodes but keep the wires plugged up. We'll drop it down here and let's Control Shift select the color ramp to preview it. So now here on this scale, I'm just going to change the scale a little bit. So I'm just going to turn the scale to a 5. So you can now see we have some bigger scratches and some smaller scratches. So I now want to join them together. So if you hold down the shift key and select both color ramps, you can hit control 0 and control 0 is going to add this mix color. I'll open it up and I'm going to drag it here into the frame. So now the mix is going to mix them both together. Now on the mix type here, I'm going to change it to darken because I just want to add both of the dark values of both of the textures. And then I can turn the factor all the way up to one. So you can now see both of these textures here on the darken result. Now I also want to control the size of the scratches when we add it to the node setup. So what I'm going to do is box select these nodes and bring them forward a bit. And then I'm just going to select the magic textures and I'm going to pull them back. So in between the magic texture and the color ramp, I'm going to search for a hue saturation value and I'll drop this here and then we can kind of make this smaller and I can duplicate the hue saturation value and drop it here and then push these together. Now why we're using this node is because there's a value which we can drag to make it lighter and darker and you can see that's changing the thickness of the scratches. So we'll be using this later in the custom node group. So now that the scratches texture is finished, we can put it into the normal to give it some bump. So we're going to put the darkened result into the normal, and I will just control shift select the principled shader to preview it. Now you can see there's some weird shading issues on the material, and that's because we need to convert the color data into normal data that the shader can use. So I'm going to go to the add menu, and I'm going to search for a bump node, and we'll add the bump node here between the darken and the normal. And then the darken result can go into the height value, and that's going to convert it to bump data. And then here on the bump strength, I'm going to turn this down to like a 0.2, so the scratches aren't that big. But if I take the base color and just turn it down, you can kind of see the reflections better. So you can now use the bump strength to make the scratches look more small or make them kind of scratched in a lot more into the plastic. Now I also want to make the scratches color be a little bit different. So let's take the result and we're going to put that into the base color. So now you can see that the scratches are black and then the rest of the material is white. But I want to control the colors and have custom colors. So to do this we're going to search for a mix color and we're going to put this between the darken and the base color. And the darken result can go into the factor. And so now the scratches texture is going to determine what part is going to be color A and what part is going to be color B. So for color A I'm just going to make this kind of like a light blue. And then for color B I'm going to make this 
kind of like a dark blue. And if you want to use the same exact colors I'm using, you can punch in this hex value. So color A is going to be 4168C1FF. That is the light scratches. And then for the just the main base color, the plastic, I'm going to be using this hex value, which is 304D. 8EFF. So now we have a nice blue plastic with some lighter scratches. Now I do just want to add a tiny little bit of noise over the surface just to add a little bit of bump and make the plastic look slightly bumpy. So what I'm going to do is search for a noise texture. Let's drop it here. And then we also want to use the same object coordinates. So we'll take the mapping vector and put that into the vector of the noise. And then I don't really like it that the wire is overlapping here. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and right click and drag over this wire. And that's going to add a reroute. And I'll just put the reroute right there. So the setup just just looks a little bit nicer. So let's control shift select the noise texture to preview it and I'm going to change a few of the settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to a 16 and I want to turn the detail up just a little bit to like a 7 so it's somewhat detailed and then I'll leave the other settings how they are. So now what I want to do is put this into the bump so we'll box select these nodes and drag them back a bit and I can take this bump node and we'll hit shift D to duplicate it. We're going to drop it here after the first one. So now we have this extra height value that we can add data into. So we're going to take the noise texture factor and we're going to put that into the height value of the bump and I'll control shift select the principal data to preview it. So there is the bump but it is way too strong and I just want it to be a very subtle bump. So I'm going to turn this bump strength to a 0 0.01, just a 0 0.01. So if you zoom really close up to the reflections there is just a tiny bit of surface bump over the plastic but it is pretty subtle. I'm going to box select these nodes here and join them into a frame and I'll add a label and I'm just going to call this bump. Now I'm also going to use this noise texture and I'm going to put it into the roughness to make a little bit of variation so some parts are more shiny and other parts are more rough. But what I first want to do is change the colors. So we'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a color ramp and we'll put the color ramp right here. So the factor now can go into the roughness there, but then I want to be able to control how rough and shiny it is because right now I don't really have any control over it. So we're going to put the color ramp here in between the noise factor and the roughness. So stick right there. So now what I can do is drag these tabs together and if they're going together they're going to be more contrasty so you can kind of see the variation in the roughness and then what I can do is change the colors. So if I make this black tab darker you can see it's going to be a very shiny plastic or if I turn it up it's going to be a more rough plastic. So I'm going to put this tab about here and I'll leave it to fully black and then the gray tab I'll kind of to about here and I'm going to make it this gray color and if you want to use the same hex value I'm using you can punch in a8, 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 FF. So now you can see it is a pretty shiny plastic. Now I also want to be able to control the roughness values in the node group. And so if we make the values lighter or darker, that's going to control the roughness. So what I can do is search for a hue saturation value. We'll put this here after the color ramp and before the roughness, and I'll just stick it right down here. So we now have this value, which I can drag around to make the plastic more rough or make the plastic more shiny. So we'll be using that in the custom node group. I'm also going to box select these nodes and give them a frame and add a label and I'll just call this noise because that's just a simple noise texture. Now the last thing that I want to do is add just a little bit of subsurface scattering in case you want some subsurface scattering to let a little bit of light to go through the plastic. So let's open up the subsurface here on the principal shader and I'll turn the weight up to like a 0.2. You can turn up more if you want to. You can kind of see it's a little bit subtle and it's a little bit hard to see in this scene but there is going to now be a little bit of light going through the object. So that's going to be it for the procedural material. So let's now make it more useful by joining it together into a node group so you can easily customize the material. So I'm going to click and drag and box select all the nodes except the material output and I'll press Control G to join it together into a node group. Now if you hit the tab key to go out of the node group, let's drag the node group over here next to the material output and I'm going to make it bigger and then I can copy the material name and I'll paste it here into the node group. Now I also want to change the name here of the BSDF. I want to call it shader instead. So if I hit the tab key with the node group selected, that'll go back into the node group. And I'm going to hit the N key to open up the side panel. And then if you go to the group tab, you can double click here on the group sockets. And I'll just rename this to shader. So now outside the node group, it's called shader. So now if I go over here to this side, we have the group input. And we can plug up all the values to the group input to control them outside of the node group. So this mapping node is plugged up to all the textures, so the mapping scale will control the size of the entire material. So we'll put the scale into the extra socket here, and if I click on the scale, you can see it's going to be three values, but I just want it to be one value instead. So what we're going to do is change the vector to float, and then I want to turn the default value to one, but the texture is still gone. That's because I need to go outside the node group, and I need to turn the scale to one. So I can now go back into the node group. 
Now I also want to control the plastic color, so I'll drag the group input way over here. Let's drag it over here. And this darker blue here, that's going to be the plastic color. So we'll put color B into the extra socket. Let's double click on this to rename it, and I'll rename it to plastic color. And then also I want to control the subsurface, so I'll put the weight here into the extra socket. And then if I drag this down here, I'm just going to rename this to subsurface. Then I want to control the roughness of the plastic. So we have this value here, which is going into the roughness to change the roughness. So I'll put the value into the extra socket socket. Let's rename this to roughness. Then I want to control some more of the roughness values. So if I drag the input back here, we have this noise texture and we have the scale values and the detail to kind of control that roughness. So I'll put the scale and the detail, both of these into these extra sockets. And I'm going to call this one noise roughness scale. And then this one I'm going to call noise roughness detail. And then I want to control the scratches color. So I'll drag the node group back over here and we can take this mix. We can take color A and put that into the extra socket. And then this one, I can rename to scratches color. Then I'm going to control the detail of the scratches. So I'll drag the node group back over here. And this noise texture here has a detail value, which is making the scratches look more detailed. So I'll put the detail into the extra socket. And then let's rename this to scratches detail. Now this linear light right here, this factor is going to distort the scratches more and less. So I'll put the factor into the extra socket and I'll call this scratches distortion. And then I want to control the scale of each one of the scratch textures. So if I drag this right down here, we have these two magic textures. So we'll put this scale here into the extra socket. And this one I'm going to call scratches scale one. And then we have this value here, which is going to make it like more thick and more visible or you can keep it down. So I'll put the value into the extra socket. And this one I'm gonna call scratches thickness one. And then I'll do the same thing for these two. So I'll put the scale into the extra socket and also the value into the extra socket. And then I'm gonna copy the material name and paste it here into this one, but this is gonna be scratches scale two. And the same thing, so copy this one and paste it here. And this will be scratches thickness too. So now we have a lot of different details to change how the scratches are looking. And then finally, I wanna control the bump strengths. So we'll drag the group input right over here. And this first bump here, that's making the scratches more bumpy. So I'll put the strength into the extra socket. And this one I'm gonna call scratches bump strength. And then the last one here is just that noise. So we'll put the strength into the extra socket. And this one, we'll rename it to noise bump strength. All right, I'm gonna drag the node group right over here back to the very starting, and I'll hit the N key to close the side panel and the tab key to go outside the node group. And there's the finished procedural material, so we can just review the material to make sure everything works. So we have the overall scale, then we have the plastic color, then also the subsurface, we can also change the roughness. We also have the noise roughness scale and the noise roughness detail, and then also just the scratches color. Then we have the scratches detail. So if I kind of zoom way in here, I can change the detail of those scratches, also the distortion of the scratches. And then we have scratches scale one, and then we also have scratches thickness one. So if you want like a lot of scratches, you can turn this way up and you can see now it looks really scratched. And then we have scratches scale two and scratches thickness two. And then we have the bump strength of the scratches, and then also just a noise bump strength to make the plastic look just very slightly bumpy on the surface. So that'll be it for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to purchase the finished procedural material, you can get that with the links in the description on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. You can also purchase my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack to purchase all of my procedural materials, and they're all pre-set up for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. So if you purchase my Ultimate Procedural Material Pack and set it up as an asset library into Blender, then you can just drag and drop the procedural materials into your 3D project. You can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create more materials, definitely check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. But I hope you found this helpful, and thanks for watching.